to give you my August TBR. And uh, one of the decisions I've made about reading in August is that I am not going to be doing any readathons. There are so many readathons all over BookTube and they are so great and so exciting. And yet somehow, no matter how much I try to work the TBR I already have into these readathons, I still don't follow my TBR and end up finding new books to add in that fit the prompts and all these things. So um, I also am experiencing a little bit of fatigue in terms of, um, I was experiencing fatigue in terms of the Book 2 Prize nonfiction for um, my June, July reading. So what I want to do is uh, really enjoy reading the final the finals uh in fiction these are all books uh that i had either had on my tbr or want to read like they're all on my tbr basically so um one of them i actually already read so i only have five that i have to read so i'm really happy about that because it means that i can just settle into um, a really nice reading pace and I don't need to feel any level of anxiety that I had for round three where I was just reading and reading and you know and reading some books that um, were, were tough to get through so okay I'm gonna try to uh, run this down for you I have the 12 authors I wanted to read in 2020 list and this month I am going to be reading three of them uh, because I have been way behind. I have not been keeping up on that list. So, so one of them I've already started and I talked about it last month in my July TBR and I didn't get to it. This was the book that kind of fell victim to the crazy amount of pages I was reading for the book two prize. This is Helen Dunmore's The Siege. This is set in Leningrad during the siege by the um, Nazi regime of Leningrad. And it follows a family, a father who is a writer who is now kind of um, subjected to censorship from the, um, the government. Uh, his daughter, Anna, who is a budding artist, but she is working in a nursery, taking care of children and looking after the family and her little brother who was born when her mother passed away in childbirth. And um, that's not a spoiler. It happens right at the beginning. So I've just started reading this um, and I am a Helen Dunmore fan. She's such a beautiful writer. So this is the first and then there's a sequel to this one as well. Um, but for now, this is the one I'm going to be reading uh, in August. The second author off of my 12 authors list is Carol Drinkwater. Carol Drinkwater writes beautiful nature writing memoir style from her olive farm in the south of France near Nice. And I try to read one of these books a year just to savor them as long as possible. So the next book in the series is more of a travel book where she travels around the Mediterranean area trying to trace the history of the olive root. So it's about how the olive tree kind of evolved through Southern Europe um, to be the dominant plant that it is today. Super excited to uh, delve back into um, Carol's writing. And then the third book that I will be reading from my author's uh, list is a Margaret Lawrence book. I just bought this. This was one of my quarantine book purchases. Um, this is A Bird in the House, and this is a series of interconnected short stories um, set in the town of Manawaka, where my top novel of all time, The Diviners by Margaret Lawrence, is also set. And I'm really excited to delve back into um, Manawaka and Margaret Lawrence's writing and um, yeah really really looking forward to this so um, I would say these are probably you know domestic stories um, with, with kind of personal reflective um, themes and narratives based out of this fictional town in Manitoba Canada I'm going to be reading three books this month for the book two prize they are on their way to the hold at the library right now 
Uh, one of them is Lanny by Max Porter. Uh, I've heard so much about Max Porter and his first book, Grief is a Thing with Feathers, which I have not read. Um, but if you follow any British booktubers, you pretty much hear about Max Porter. Uh, this one seems to be um, kind of um, magical realism, small village in England where this um, fictional god slash godlike character is coming to life and um, interacting with this new family who've just moved into the village. So sounds very intriguing to me. I'm really interested in, in checking out Max Porter and seeing if I get along with his writing style. Uh, the next one that I will be reading this um, uh, month is Women Talking by Miriam Taves. This has been on my um, TBR since it came out. I have not read any Miriam Taves. Very excited, obviously, a Canadian writer who I have not heard of, I have not read, and I've heard so much. So many people love her writing. This is a story, this is um, fiction based on a true story about a Mennonite community where the men were abusing the women and drugging them. And this is about um, the women in a circle who are not literate and there is a man who they trust named August, I believe, who is recording their um, thoughts and how they're processing this realization and how they're trying to come to terms with what to do um, to seek justice. So very excited to finally read this one. And 10 minutes and 38 seconds in this strange world by Elif Shafak. Um, again, super interested in what this is about. I believe that 10 minutes and 38 seconds is the time it takes for the brain or that the brain kind of stays functioning when you've been, um, when you're dying and, or when you have died. And so this book takes place in that time period and it is, um, the narrative of a sex worker, I believe. And I'm super interested in reading some of Elif Shafak's work and um, and going into something like, like, I think the premise of this book is just really, really intriguing. So very excited to read that. And I'm going to read the other two books that I have not yet read off the list, um, in September or sorry. Yes. In September. <laughs> what month is it? It's August. It's August. Okay. In September. Uh, so I'll talk about those then. The audiobook I'm going to be reading this month is called Looking for Lorraine. The Radiant and Radical Life of Lorraine Hansberry by Amani Perry. Um, I know a lot of people have been talking about Amani Perry because of her more recent work. This is a biography of Lorraine Hansberry who wrote A Raisin in the Sun, the very famous play, the first play that was on Broadway written by a black woman. She was uh, a queer woman. She was very radical and um, grew up died very young of cancer and grew up, um, I think she was born in 1930. So uh, I'm really excited to hear about her life, learn more about her. I have not seen or read A Raisin in the Sun, but I probably will try to watch um, one or two versions of the play uh, or see the film um, in conjunction with, with reading this book. Okay, so just two more books to talk to you about. Oh. Three more books to talk to you about. The next one is Writing a Woman's Life by Carolyn G. Halbrun, and I heard about this book on Sean the Book Maniac's channel. Um, this is going to be for my Virginia Wolf slash Bloomsbury uh, Diaries project, and I think I said I wouldn't put them in my TBRs, but here you go. Sneak peek. Spoiler alert. Here it is. Um, so this is about... Um, the the way in which women have tried to exert their own writing style that is not dictated by the um, Western patriarchal structure of men deciding how women are going to write. Um, so this covers the writing of Virginia Woolf, George Sand, and Dorothy Sayers. And it's, it's very quick, a very short um, little exploration of how these three writers tried to break the social norms of what women's writing could be about. So I'm very interested in this. 
I purchased this poetry collection by Afua Cooper, uh, Copper Woman. I mean, this, uh, I just love this cover. It's a beautiful, beautiful cover. Um, this is a painting, a painting by Diego Rivera. So Afua Cooper um, writes out of the African diaspora. I really love this description on the back, so I'm just gonna read it for you. Uh, Afua Cooper uses cultural memory to extract the spiritual essence of the African diasporic experience. The women and men in these pages emerge fiercely pungently alive. They are simultaneously original individuals and stunning archetypes. Cooper sings their lives and her own to the music of Psalms and Solomon's songs and to the rhythms of Africa and dub. Her poems are magical, elemental. So um, it was a few weeks ago, sometime in June, I believe, where there was an initiative on Instagram to purchase books by black authors to try to lift their sales, their general sales um, in publishing and just promote black authors. So this is one of the books that I purchased um, for that. And um, a full Cooper is based out of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. I'm excited to read more black Canadian authors. And so last month I read Lorraine Goodison and this month I'm reading a full Cooper my 1970s project. I am trying to get on track with that as well. So last month I read one of the books, uh, Heat and Dust, and this month I'm going to read Bear by Marian Engel. Marian Engel is a Canadian writer who um, was a contemporary of um, Margaret Lawrence and Margaret Atwood, I think, um, but definitely lesser known. Bear is her most famous novel. And the reason it's so famous is because there's a certain scene, apparently, um, between the main character who moves to Northern Canada to do a small job and she encounters a bear and her and this bear develop some sort of relationship. So that has, I think, divided people immensely on this book. And I have to say that I am ridiculously curious about this book and I have no idea whether I will like it or not, but I am going to give it a try this month. So those are the books that I will be reading for August. I am going on a small getaway. The um, COVID-19 numbers here in British Columbia are um, definitely a little bit higher than they were a few months ago when everyone was primarily staying home, but they are still very low in comparison to many places in the world. And so we are in a phase three. And so that means that we are able to do trips within our province um, safely. And um, so we are going to go to a little trip for a little trip to Tofino, one of our favorite places in the world and spend five days there. So I'll be reading there. I will do some vlogging. Um, I'm gonna be taking some art and I'm very, very excited to have a little break and have a little getaway and have a change of scenery, which is what I'm sure many people all around the world are craving right now with the limited amount of travel going on. So um, I will try to take you there virtually with me, even though I can't um, take you in person. So thank you so much for watching. And I will be back again soon with another video.